Okay, so we are doing D2, Chapter 1, Transportation Problems. And this is only in A2. I don't know why they put it as Chapter 1. Kind of would have made sense to put something AS as Chapter 1. But anyway, here we are. So in this particular module or this particular chapter, we are going to aim to most efficiently to do with either time or cost to transport goods from a supply point, which is usually called a source. That's something like a factory. You can imagine there's our supply point at factories making different things to a demand point, which we call a destination. And that demand point is either going to be a warehouse where the stuff is going to be stored or a depot or a shop, or even a customer. So we've got something that's being supplying, and then something that is demanding or sort of wanting to receive those particular goods. And we get given the following information about this. We get to find out how much each supplier can supply, how much each depot, or how much each shop or customer demands, or how much they need. We find out the cost per unit of transporting from a particular factory to a particular warehouse. In other words, the cost per unit to go from a source to a destination. And actually, that's all represented in this table that we've got here. And I'm going to talk through what each of these indicated numbers actually represent here. So in this grid that we've got, these numbers that we have inside this section, they are representing the cost, the cost per unit. So whatever it is that's going from supplier A to depot W, it costs 180 pounds or minutes, whatever it might be, to transport that from supplier A to uh, depot W, 180 per unit that we have. So that if you were going to be transporting 10 units, it would obviously cost you 1,800 pounds. And then we've got some different numbers. These ones that are along the edge, they're not referring to the cost. So this middle section is the cost here. This 15 that I've got here is to do with the demand, and it's to do with the demand that Depot X has. In other words, how many lorry loads, in this particular case, how many lorry loads does it want in total? So Depot X wants to receive 15 lorry loads of whatever the product is that it might be. And then this last number that we have over here, the 16, this is about the stock that is that can be kind of given away from supplier B. So supplier B has got 16 lorry loads of stock that it can give away. And the aim of this problem is to figure out how Depot W can get 11 lorry loads, X can get 15 and Y can get 14 and Z can get 10. And where it will get it from, will it get it from supplier A, B or C? And the most important thing is... How can we do that in a way that would minimize the cost using all of this information here? And I've also added in this number 50. In this particular case, we have got that the demand from these four depots is 50. They want 50 lorry loads in total. And the stock, the availability of these lorry loads of whatever the product is, also adds up to 50, which means there's going to be a kind of a perfect transfer from all of the suppliers to the depots, from all of these sources to these destinations, so that it will get fully kind of allocated. We're going to start off just by doing an allocation and then what we're going to try and do is improve that solution to make it get better and better. So the first thing we'll learn about is something called the northwest north -west corner method. That's just a way of us assigning where all these lorries are going to be coming from and where they're going to. We have a quick little bit about looking at an unbalanced problem and degenerate solutions. And then we begin about how to improve our solutions. And that really takes place in exercise 1D, where we do the stepping stone method. And then there's a little bit added on about linear programming, which I'm presuming you know about if you are doing A2 of D2 at this point. Now, one final note as well is in the exam, there will be a maximum of four sources. We've only got three here and four destinations as we have here. So you should be expected as a maximum to do four by four. So we're actually just going to go straight in to how to find an initial solution. And this is called the Northwest Corner Method. So before we can even make an improved solution, we need to come up with an initial solution. And the first thing we're going to do here is to allocate the supply to the demand so that all of the needs are met. And that's gonna give us our initial solution. And we do it, do this using something that is called the Northwest Corner Method, because we're gonna start up here in the Northwest. And I'm gonna show you it once. And actually, when you practice this, you're gonna just start to see how it really just feels like an intuitive kind of puzzle. It kind of reminds me a bit of a Sudoku. It's not, I wanna know what the puzzle is it reminds me of, but you'll see what I mean as we go through this. So we're going to allocate from the northwest corner. If the supply or the stock is depleted, we move one square down. 
And if the demand is fulfilled, we move one square right. This is going to feel really intuitive when you actually do this. And we just repeat this process until the supply and the demand are both fulfilled. And we're never going to move diagonally in these things. We only ever move one to the right or one down. Otherwise, we come up with something called a degenerate solution. So this is still from the previous one that I had on the, the previous slide. We're actually going to just do an initial allocation. And we could do this with a common sense kind of approach, but we're going to use this northwest corner method because they always ask us a particular method they want us to use here. So I'm going to allocate from the northwest corner. Well, here, this um, supplier A has got 14 and W wants 11. So that's great. I can actually just give W all 11 from supplier A. Now, this is where we've actually had all of the demand fulfilled for W. Its demand of 11 has been fulfilled. So we're going to move one square to the right because A has still got three left in its stockpile to give out. So I'm going to say that it's going to give three of those to X. And now we've depleted all of that supply or that stock because we've used up the 14 that we've got here. So we're going to move one square down and we know that X needs an extra 12 to fulfill its demand of 15. And it can get that 12 because there's 16 that are here. So I'm going to put 16, uh, put the 12 here because it's been fulfilled. And then because this demand has been fulfilled, I'm going to move one square to the right. So there's 16 in the stockpile. That means I can put four in here because it still needs 14. And then because that's been fulfilled, the stock has been fulfilled, I'll move down. And so I'm going to move down and say that Y needs an extra 10 because it wants 14 overall. And that's great because C has enough, which means that Z wants 10 and C has 10 left over. So we've got this pattern where we started in the northwest and it's kind of zigzagged along. Now, it's not always going to zigzag along like this. And I'm going to show you in the next page why it might do that in a different kind of way or how it might do that in a different way. Now we do need to calculate the total cost, so we're going to actually just think about what this means. Well, between A and W we've moved 11 units, so 11 units at the AW cost is 180, so that's 11 lots of 180. And then we've got 3 lots of the 110. Then we have 12 lots of the one that's between B and X, that's 250. We've got 4 lots of the 150. We have 10 lots of the 190. I could have done these with multiplication signs. And then we've got 10 lots of the 120. And that's going to tell us what the total cost in our initial solution is of allocating these things. So I'm just going to quickly whack that on my calculator. And we have, as long as I've done this correct, it is, presumably it was in pounds, but the total cost is £9,010. And if they wanted to say actually what the solution was, I'm not going to write the whole thing. We could say supply W11 from A. Supply X3 from A and 12 from B. And I'm just going to write etc. here because you don't need to watch me going through all of that. Now let's just quickly talk about what kinds of patterns you might expect to see in the table. You might have something like this, where it moves across really quickly. If it's moving across really quickly, that is because the demand is getting fulfilled for W and X immediately. So it moves across. And then when the, uh, the stockpile gets depleted, we move down, demand fulfilled, stockpile depleted like this. So you might have something that goes that kind of shape. You may have something like this where the demand takes a while for it to be kind of fulfilled. And then afterwards it gets um, the stock kind of spreads out across X, Y and Z. And similarly, you could have this kind of pattern like the one that we had. So the question I'm going to ask you before we go and have a go at exercise 1A is for a table with M sources, in this case we have three, and N destinations, in which case, in this case we have four, what do you notice about the number of occupied cells? In other words, the cells that would have values in them like this. Well, in all of these examples that we've got here, I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I had an N and an M, seven in total, or sorry, an M and an N, seven in total, and six have always been shaded. So the pattern is going to be, and you can kind of see why this is true, the number of occupied cells, occupied cells, meaning cells that will have like an allocation in like these numbers, is going to be equal to the number of sources plus the number of destinations minus one. 
Because if you think about this one, this is probably the best one to have a look at. If we count them all up and then count all of these up, we're double counting this one that is down here, which is why we need to subtract that one. And this is really important. We always need to make sure that the number of occupied cells is one less than the sum of the sources and the destinations. Otherwise, our algorithm that we have later on will not be working. So that's everything you need about the Northwest method, which is literally just about filling in the table for exercise 1A. In the next video, we're going to be just having a quick look at what happens if we have an unbalanced problem.